a proportion stop. This is the OJ today. What's up, folks? I am Alex Bastjevansky. It is awesome to have you aboard for this week's program and exciting times. The conference finals are here. Nobody is surprised to see Milton uh, Pickering or the junior Canadians still standing, but Kohlberg is a bit of a different story. The Cougars are the only fourth seed remaining, but they've just been absolutely fearless so far in the postseason knocking off Wellington and Halliburton County on the way to the Southeast Final. Their series against Toronto kicked off last weekend. Highlights in this segment are brought to you by Instat. Instat is the official analytics supplier to the OJHL. The Junior Canadians had the league's top offense during the regular season and they opened the scoring in game one. Catalano whirls it away. In comes Fukakusa, wild trailing, wild trying to get the shot. Out in front, Fukakusa scores! Engine, engine, number nine, all aboard the Fukakusa line! Jaron Kligman with the awesome call there, and he's actually going to be on the show in a few minutes, so stick around for that. But anyway, the lead did not last long. Andy Rice ties it up at one apiece. That was the score at the break. Third period now. Matthew Wild steals the puck, sets up Eric Vitali. He tickles the twine, and the GRCs are back on top. But once again, Coburg responds. Scramble out front here. And then Jacob Gilbert puts it past Selby Warren. And it was 2-2, but just two minutes later, Christian Catalano feeds Tyler Fukakuza. This is his second of the contest, and it puts Toronto up 3-2. They would add a bit of insurance as well. Two on one here. Kyan Haldenby keeps it himself and makes it a two-goal contest. That is how this one would finish up as the Junior Canadians double up the Cougars in Game 1 to draw first blood in the series. Okay, the Northwest Final between Pickering and Milton. Game 1 and the visiting Menace strike first. Zach Roy makes the initial stop, but Ryan O'Donnell banks home the second chance and Milton is on the board first three minutes later the panthers respond though on the power play brendan tomlinson first team ojhl all-star rips the one-timer and it was all even up at one apiece and then with the man advantage once again ian martin sets up dustin hutton and uh the panthers looking like a well-oiled machine it was 2-1 at the break. They would add to it in the second frame. Uh, once again on the power play, pinpoint passing here as they go tic-tac-toe. Miles Perry, kaboom, increases the pickering advantage to two goals. Milton uh, manages to get one back here as the Panthers can't clear it out. Aiden Hughes throws it on goal through a screen and just gets it to go. And it's a 3-2 game now. You can never count out that high-powered Milton offense. Uh, but then, watch this. Turns away from O'Donnell and starts from behind his own net. Altamar, a long pass right on the tape of Rodas on the breakaway. Christos Rodas scores! Christos Rodas on his breakaway, the second of the playoffs for Christos Rodas. And the Panthers lead 4-2. to So a two-goal advantage for Pickering entering the third, and they were right to get that insurance marker midway through the frame. Holden Rogers rips it past Zach Roy to make it a one-goal game. Alas, that is as close as Milton would get. Pickering takes game one, 4-3 in what certainly looked like it was going to be an incredible series. Okay, the league awards keep on coming. Brendan Tomlinson, who we just saw with Pickering there. Uh, he is the OJHL's Defenseman of the Year, the big award. 55 points in 54 games. So obviously, great offensive chops, but he was uh, amazing, obviously, defensively as well. The former Halifax Moosehead of the QMJHL, uh, he is committed to York University. Jacob Vrugdenhill of the Wellington Dukes was named the league's most gentlemanly player. 
only three minor penalties over 53 games this season. But he's uh, not just a nice guy, he also torched the opposition. 66 points in 53 games for Jacob as he finished up second on the Wellington Dukes in scoring. And Justin Wu, the goalkeeper for the Brantford 99ers, is your scholastic player of the year and uh, he clearly pays a lot more attention in school than I ever did. 99th percentile with his SAT score of 1520 and uh, he had a great year too. 10 and 10 uh, record with one shutout for the 99ers. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Clean Quip. Clean Quip is the official disinfectant supplier to the OJHL. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today, everyone. What a season the Pickering Panthers have had. Their 82 regular season points set a new club record, but it's playoff time now, and that's all just a distant memory. The Cats are focused on capturing the Buckland Cup. It would be their first championship since the 1985-86 season, and yes, I'm old enough to say I was there in the crowd watching when that happened. No jokes, please. Okay, well, the Milton Menace were doing their best to make sure Pickering's title drought continued. The Panthers, of course, took game one, so this was game two back in Milton. Another great crowd on hand, a thousand strong, but it's the visitors that strike first. In the second period, Miles Perry Getting credit for the goal kind of looked like it went in off the menace defenseman, but who cares? It's a goal. Pickering up 1-0, and they would add to it in the third. Ryan Johnstone, the forgotten man in front of the net, and yeah, oops. He splits the wickets on Ryan Dugas as the Panthers were doing a good job of silencing the home crowd until this. Jordan Stock. Nice pass, finds his man up. Ruccio, cuts in! Ruccio, scores! To infinity and beyond! Lucas Buzio! Lucas with the beauty to pull them within one, but the Cats would snuff out any chance of a comeback. Ian Martin leading the playoff scoring race right now, by the way. Add some insurance for the visitors. That made it 3-1. It finished up that way as the Panthers take a 2-0 stranglehold on their best of five series with Milton. Here's game two between the JRCs and the Cougars. Back in Coburg, a Cats fans out in full force as well. A thousand on hand, hoping for a W, but it's the visitors that strike first. Ben Van Watershoot following up the rebound and jamming it home, 1-0. It stayed that way until the second. Simon Singer feeds Christian Catalano. Ole Catalano. Making it two zip for the red, blue, and white. Too many weapons on this team. But hold on. The Cougars clawed their way back into it. Selby Warren making the initial stop. Zach Smith right there to bang home the second chance and cut the deficit to a single goal for Coburg. And then in the third period, Hoskin a jammer drops it off to Thibodeau. Hit shot saved there by Warren. Thibodeau again dumps it out front. Here's the chance and shot. They score! And the Cougars tie it at two. Might have been Hoskin, 91. Yeah, Andy Rice getting credit for the goal, actually. And it was all tied up 2-2. But then the JRCs really flexed their muscle. Jordan Carafile uh, puts the Canadians back on top, 3-2. And then Catalano doing some extra work for the empty netter, but gets the second chance to go. They would add a second empty netter after that as well to make it a 5-2 final as the JRCs move to within one game of advancing to the Buckland Cup final with that win. Alumni news, Justin Danforth has been nominated for the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy, which is given annually to the player who best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey in the NHL. The former Coburg Cougar and current Columbus Blue Jacket is an inspiration Head to the OJ Today archives to view my interview with him this year. Show number 12. Way to go, Justin. Second team All-Stars were announced. Matt Zebedee of the Burlington Cougars, who uh, led the Cats in scoring uh, with 73 points and was also named the OJHL's most improved player this year, uh, tripling his point total, actually, from the last full season he played two seasons ago in Collingwood. Way to go, Matt. 
Uh, another Matt, Matthew Wild of the Second Junior goal. Canadians makes the cut as well. 81 scoring. points this Wild season. He was in and out of the top five all campaign for the powerful Toronto Junior Canadians. And uh, Bryce Sutherland of the St. Mike's Buzzers is on your second team as well. 77 points on the double blue and uh, 41 goals, 36 assists for Bryce, who's actually uh, uncommitted at this point, but uh, that's likely to change in the near future. Your D-man and uh, Wellington's Jonathan Bala uh, heads to the second team and uh, what a great year, 51 points for him, which was second uh, among all OJHL defensemen, and of course he was solid on the blue line as well defensively. And Cooper Bertrand of the Toronto Junior Canadians, another JRC on that list. Uh, wow, what a great year Cooper had. 43 points, uh, which were fourth among all OJHL defensemen. Just look at the hands and the moves on this guy. Unreal Cooper. And uh, yeah, your second team keeper is Christian Chichigoy of the Halliburton Huskies and uh, what a season Christian had to make the second team 25-11-1 with four shutouts, a 2.32 goals against average and uh, 925 save percentage as the Huskies just had what a great first season they had in the town of Minden. Welcome back to the show, everyone. So last week, it was OGHL.ca feature writer Ron Valentine joining me to talk about the league's award winners so far. On this week's program, it's Junior Canadians play-by-play -play man Jaron Kligman uh, taking over. Jaron, how are things? Very good, Alex. Thank you for having me back on the show. Awesome. Great to have you here, man. And uh, yeah, the league has been releasing its award winners over the past few weeks now, just gradually, one by one. Uh, Rob Pearson recently announced, picked up the Coach of the Year award. And uh, Jaron, pretty tough to argue against that. Rob has just done such an incredible job since coming in and uh, helping to steer the Panthers organization. Well, from start to finish this year, the Panthers were one of the most consistent teams throughout the league. Um, obviously, you know, in that division, they had the, the the better team. They were competitive against Collingwood and Aurora, and, you know, they got their wins against uh, Stouffville and Markham when they faced on the schedule. But Rob Pearson did a fantastic job. I think he's a coach that gets the most out of his players. He understands how his players work, and he puts them in situations where they're able to succeed. And um, he did a fantastic job early Earlier in the year, making some key trades, um, bringing in Miles Perry, bringing in Jacob Partridge, bringing in Dustin Hutton, and it all adds up to create a really well-rounded attack on their offense and a great uh, defensive line as well with Tomlinson in the back end and as well as some of their other really good solid defensemen. So Pearson did a fantastic job with the Panthers this whole year. A consistent coach really knows how to bring a game plan night in and night out and overall he is a huge part leading to the success of the Panthers team and the organization and uh, he deserves this award without a doubt. Matt Zebedee takes home the league's Most Improved Player Award. Uh, he led the Burlington Cougars, of course, in scoring this year. And compared to the last full season that he played, which was two years ago now in Collingwood, he tripled his uh, point total this campaign. Big improvement, all right. 100%. I mean, Matt Zebedee is someone who I saw in his first year in the league. He was with the Toronto Junior Canadians in 2018-2019, uh, and he only put up 12 points in 38 games. And he was a solid player, you know, a good third-line player, a lot of speed uh, and a good skating ability. He would kill penalties. But to, to bring it up in Collingwood, um, definitely improved, but he hadn't unlocked the full potential until he got to Burlington this year and just unbelievable showcase of him. 73 points on the season really brought out the best in the line mates that he played with and they have a lot of really high leverage scoring ability guys and Zebedee helped them and really was able to um, get to that 
full key, unlock it. And um, to see a player in his third year in the league going through everything that has gone through with stoppages and shutdowns to come out and really leave the league making a huge impact so the league knows what he can bring night in and night out is unbelievable. And so for Zebedee, um, to see where he started with the Canadians to where he finishes now in his final year of eligibility in Burlington is truly nice to see. And uh, he did a fantastic job this year. Well, Jaron, Ron and I also talked last week about George Figueres, of course, of the North York Rangers, who was named a first-team OJHL All-Star as a rookie defenseman, and he's added another piece of hardware to his trophy case, being named the league's top prospect, and certainly, yeah, big things are ahead for George Figueres. It's unbelievable. I mean, I, to see him, you know, four times coming into Scotiabank Pond, you could really see the type of player he is. Uh, like you just mentioned, I mean, he's he's an 4 born player, but he plays like he's a 21-year-old veteran who's had, you know, five years experience in the league. Um, really a calm presence on their blue line. Um, having Kondata as a partner, Jaden Kondata, his defensive partner, I think really helped him uh, unlock some of those uh, key elements to his game, the speed the skill, uh, the ability to carry the puck from one end to the other without really getting touched. Um, and he has that ability that's like similar to uh, Victor Hedman in the NHL where, you know, he's got that long reach on the stick so he can guide players to the outside without even laying the body. Truly special to watch him this year for the Rangers. Okay, finally, the announcement for the league's top goalie came out last Saturday as well. Your thoughts on that award, Jaron? Well, listen, seeing James Gray perform is is a treat to watch. I mean, it frustrates you if you're playing against him. Uh, he just has this ability to shut you down. It's, it's as simple as that. When he is locked in, you can't get anything by him. And uh, the rebound control, his ability to command his paint, communicate with his defense core, um, unbelievable ability to just keep the Rangers in games. They could be getting outshot by 25 and he could still have the wherewithal to keep the energy going. And I think the other reason why he was able to elevate his game even more is just having that confidence. And I'll give a shout out to his backup goaltender, Hardy Westman. Having a backup goalie who you know and have confidence in plays dividends. He's a dominant goaltender and a huge component of the Rangers' success this season. All right, Jared, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got for this segment. We've got to wrap it up, but thanks again for taking the time, buddy. Really appreciate it. Stay healthy, and uh, we will chat later on. Thank you very much, Alex. Take care as well. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Nutrifarms, the official sponsor of the OJHL's championship series. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today. So the Toronto Junior Canadians, despite producing countless high-end players over the years that have gone on to both the NCAA and the NHL, have never won an OJHL title, but they feel this is their time. The JRC's racked up the league's best record in the regular season and only Coburg stood between them and a berth in the final. And it was the perfect setting for the JRC's to do just that on home ice, but then the Cats went and spoiled the party. We pick it up with the game tied 2-2, ignore the scoreboard on top of the screen, that's incorrect. Kyan Haldenby popping the bottle, making it 3-2, shorthanded marker the Cougars even at the Callaway Mercer. Power play marker here, and it was all tied up 3-3. This was all in the first period, by the way. Six goals in the second. Watch this one. Christian Catalano beside the net, ends up feeding Matt Wild out front for the tally, but take another look at what happened. Uh, Wild fires it off the referee, gets the perfect bounce back, then feeds Catalano. Can we consider that one a member's bounce? Man, oh man. But that's when the Cougars go ballistic right off the draw. Jacob Gilbert ties it up 4-4. And then just a buckle four later, this is the exact same play, only it's Andy Rice with the finish. And that gave the Cougars their first lead of the game. They would coast from that point on. So Colbert does not go gently into that good night. They extend the series and will try to even it up on home ice on Friday.
that's what Milton was trying to do in Pickering as well. Trailing 2-0 in their series, things started off great for the Manus. Aiden Hughes making it ones at Milton, 742 into the contest, and then... He has speed. Holmes dances around, walking to the middle, scores! A highlight reel goal by Ryan Holmes. And was it ever, but that's when the wheels fall off for Milton, the guy with an even harder name to pronounce than mine, Alex Papasperopoulos makes it 2-1, and then Lucas Rowe steals the puck and banks it in right there off the Milton defender. Ouch. It was all tied up 2-2. The third period was just a bloodbath for the menace. 21 seconds in, Ethan Lindsay somehow gets that one to go from an insane angle. Uh, that gave the Panthers their first lead of the contest, and then just 26 seconds after that, Christos Rodas spots Miles Perry out front. 4-2 Panthers, and they would cruise to the 7-2 win from there. So Pickering advances to the final, but what a great season for Milton. They really connected with the community, and hopefully they can ride that momentum into next season. Here's a look at the playoff bracket. Now Pickering, of course, advancing to the final after beating Milton, while Coburg is trying to extend their series to five games uh, with the Toronto Junior Canadians. OJ Leaders now brought to you by Nutrifarms. Nutrifarms, the official sponsor of the OJHL's championship series and your playoff scoring leaders, Ian Martin and Christian Catalano of the Junior Canadians, uh, tied on top. Aiden Hughes of Milton, Liam Fidak of the JRCs, and uh, D-Man, Brendan Tomlinson of Pickering. Rounding out your top five. Plays of the week now brought to you by Troy Hockey. Troy is the official apparel provider to the Ontario Junior Hockey League. Donnellan starts from behind his own net. Altamar, a long pass right on the tape of Rodas on the breakaway. Christos Rodas scores! Christos Rodas on his breakaway. The second of the playoffs for Christos Rodas. Right in the center with nobody home as they were right in. In comes Wild. Play back. Vitali scores. Eric Vitali puts it home. Now holding on to it is Hutton. Goes back to Tomlinson. Hutton. Cross crease pass. One timer. Scores. Miles Perry. And it comes back into the Canadian's end. Bertrand back on the puck. Here's a shot. They score. And the Cougars are going to get on the board here. And the area he wants to play it. Won by the Cougars, shot scores. Tie game once again. And it's Jacob Gilbert who ties it up for Coburg. Ryan Holmes picks it up, he has speed. Holmes dances around, walking to the middle, scores! A highlight reel goal by Ryan Holmes. Jordan Stock. Nice pass, finds his man up. Bujo, cuts in, Bujo, scores! To infinity and beyond, Lucas Bujo! And that is going to wrap up this week's show. But just a reminder, all throughout the playoffs, to stay up to date with everything in the OJHL, be sure to check out the league's different social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.